Winter feeding beef cows on annual crop land is a practice a lot of producers are using today. Here at Western Beef Development Center, we're looking at the effect of several winter feeding programs on cow performance, soil nutrient profile, and the economics. The winter feeding period for beef cows in Western Canada is typically 200 days long, so that means 200 days in a dry lot pen, and that certainly can be costly to a cow-calf producer. Most often, beef cattle are fed preserved forages in a dry lot pen, but some of the issues are that dry lot, that manure pack the following spring, and facilities upgrade and yardage costs. We know that beef cows retain only 10 to 15 percent of consumed nutrients, so there's an opportunity here to utilize some of that nitrogen and phosphorus from a winter feeding program. Bale grazing and bale processing in a previous trial here at Western Beef Development Center showed there was no effect on cow weight or impact, negative impact on cow condition. Also, a great reduced cost of 58 cents per cow per day was found in that particular study. Today, we see producers using more extensive feeding systems in the field. They're trying to search for lower feeding cost techniques as well as manage the efficient use of nitrogen and phosphorus. But the questions remain, what's the impact on the beef cow also, can we utilize those manure nutrients on the subsequent crop the following year? And at the end of the day, what's the cost per cow per day of these extensive feeding systems? So the question was, can we manage beef cows out on an annual crop field, like a barley stubble field, and capture those manure nutrients as well as manage these cows in an extensive feeding system that's going to reduce the producer's cost of production? The study was conducted at Tremunda Research Ranch. The study site was a 40 hectare field seeded to six row forage barley cultivar ranger. That field was then subdivided into 10 separate paddocks. Nine paddocks were used for bale grazing, straw chaff grazing, or swath grazing with three replicates of each grazing system. As I mentioned, the winter feeding programs we evaluated, including swath grazing, where that ranger barley was grown and swathed at mid doe stage. A bale grazing program where that ranger barley was then swathed at mid-dough and baled up as round green feed bales and grazed out there in the field. And the third extensive feeding system was a straw chaff graze where that barley was allowed to ripen to harvest. The material was combined and the straw and chaff was collected using a hole buncher and left behind in 40 to 50 pound piles behind the combine. These three extensive systems were then compared to an intensive or traditional dry lot system where that green feed round bale forage barley was then fed in a dry lot system over that 100 day period. So this was a three year study from 2005 to 2008. 180 beef cows, dry pregnant beef cows, randomly assigned to one of four winter grazing systems either bale graze, straw chaff graze, swath graze, or dry lot feeding. All the cattle out in the field provided adequate wind shelter and they were allowed access to, to a water source. In some cases they were snow grazing and feed was allocated on a three to four day period using portable electric fence. We were interested in the impact of these winter grazing programs on beef cow performance. So we evaluated body weight change. Was it positive or negative? We also evaluated body condition score at the start and the end of the grazing trial and we also looked at ultrasound rib and rump fat. Looking at the protein profile, crude protein profile of the four of the feeds fed in the four different systems, we see that swath graze was about 13.8% crude protein. Straw chaff came in a little bit less at 10% crude protein, while the green feed bales fed in the bale graze or dry lot were roughly 12.7% crude protein. Energy levels were quite good as well. For three of the four systems, uh, swath graze was 61% TDN. The bale graze and dry lot were 61 and 65% TDN. And of course, we knew the straw chaff energy levels would be a lot lower, coming at 49%. Calcium phosphorus levels as well were quite adequate in this barley green feed. All the diets were formulated using Cowbite software. And after evaluating the diets, we saw that three of the four were adequate in terms of providing adequate energy and protein to the beef cows. That's the swath graze, the bale graze, and the dry lot feeding, green feed bales. However, we knew dry chaff grazing would come in a little bit lower energy, and the cows then received an additional supplement, four to five pounds of a range pellet fed on a daily basis. Looking at the effect of the winter feeding systems on body weight change of the beef cows over an 80-day period, we see that all these body weight change, of course, were positive with the exception of swath grazing that had a marginal or maintained their body weight of the beef cows and all the other three systems we saw the beef cows with positive body weight change. 
We also measured soil nutrients, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus, left behind after the winter grazing program using a plant root simulator, which was a mechanism where we evaluated the level of nitrogen and phosphorus in the rooting zone of the barley forage crop and then we took that data, put it into surface software and came up with a distribution gradient. Looking at levels of soil nitrogen on the bale graze system, we can see on the left where the bale sat in the field and cows came and bale grazed for an 80 day period, you can see a concentration of soil nitrogen around where those animals congregated for an extended period of time. Our next measure was to say, okay, did this high level of concentrated nitrogen result in extrapolation or increased biomass production of that barley crop the following four or five months later? And we see there was a little bit of an association between where those nutrients were in the springtime around where those bales sat compared to the increased amount of biomass on that barley crop four or five months later. So looking at the amount of soil nitrogen on the swath graze systems out there in the barley stubble field, we can see where those barley windrows sat, there was an increased concentration of soil nitrogen, and in some cases there was a correlation in increased biomass or barley crop growing four to five months later. Again, there was a slight association between soil nitrogen levels and where these straw chaff piles sat in the winter grazing program where there was accumulation of soil nitrogen where those animals congregated left behind soil nitrogen through fecal or urine and the associated correlation between the increased biomass of that barley crop growing four to five months later. So one of the questions was is that if a producer is going to winter graze beef cows out on a barley stubble field what's the issue with the crop residue or the residual feed left the following spring. We know that a producer has to go out there and seed that subsequent crop the following spring. How does he manage that residue or that litter left behind? And you can see this is the bale graze grid in May of 2006, the spring following winter grazing programs. So we had to come in with heavy harrows and distribute that residue or that litter left behind from the bale grazing program. Uh, we had to hit it twice with the heavy harrow for the swath graze and straw chaff sites, we only had the heavier harrow once. So our question was, will that impact germination or growth of that barley crop the following year? So we can see in this particular slide that it was made that all that trash is out there. We heavy harrowed that residue and we seeded that barley crop right, in, right through that trash and we can see by July that there was a minimal impact on germination or growth of that barley crop about two months after those cows left the field. So what's most important to a lot of producers is what's the costs associated with these winter grazing systems and you can see our research costs on the top row where we are in fact had replicate groups of cows out there, more labor, a little more equipment, a little more fencing to do with our particular study. When we take away the fact that a producer would be managing more than 180 cows, probably 200 or 300 cows with one water trough and minimal labor, you can see that really Winter feeding out an extensive feeding program was at least 30% less than feeding those beef cows in a dry lot pen. So to summarize with this particular study, at the end of the day, our implications include that beef cows in extensive winter grazing programs, if it's bale graze, straw chaff graze, or swath graze, need adequate protection in cold weather. So either portable windbreaks or natural shelter belts. Of course, bedding should be supplied as well on those extremely cold days. And of course, you need to feed test those rations that are out there and of course, provide adequate energy or protein supplement. We also find that naive cows or new cattle that you bring into your ranch or farm may need one or two winters to adapt to those field feeding systems if they're going to settle down there and maintain their body condition.